Hey everybody, welcome to the Renew Show. Um, first want to say Happy New Year. This is the first show in 2014 and um, we're glad that you were able to um, hang out with us tonight. Um, okay, I have to say off the bat is that we're still kind of experimenting and finding the perfect way to manage the comments through Google now. So I did not activate the Q&A section. So Every comment that you want to leave, just leave it below and just remember to refresh the uh, page every couple minutes so you can see everybody else's comments and just try to interact that way. Um, so before I go any further and talk about what the show is about, um, my co-host is going to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about her and, her, and whatever she wants to say. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Renew Show. Happy New Year. Hope you're all doing well and healthy and getting all your resolutions started. And should they have already been started, they should be fully in motion. My name on Facebook is Felicia Nurse, and that name comes from the college that I went to, Felician College. It's a nursing college. Um, my name is not Felicia. It is Lori, for those of you who don't know. Um, basically, my channel is all about my weight loss journeys, plural, that I've been on in quite some time. I've done Weight Watchers. I've done Metafast. I'm on Wonder Slim. I've done nothing. I've gone to the gym. I stopped going to the gym. So my channel is pretty much a little bit of everything. There's some grocery hauls, some cooking, some makeup, which Khalif can't stand. <laughs> Right? <laughs> um, what else? Do I do some exercise. We do some antics. I don't know. It's just a little bit of everything. So if you're ever bored and want to stop by, please do subscribe. You won't go. You won't go hungry with my channel. Let me tell you. Um, I'm never at a loss for words, and as you can tell, I could just go on and on and on. So um, I have an Instagram. My name is the same, Felicia Nurse. Um, where I post some pictures of the food I eat and trying to keep myself accountable, looking for information and, you know, willing to share it as well. So um, hop on over, say hello, and I hope you enjoy the show tonight. Khalif, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so my name is Khalif, but um, better known as Fat Guy Skinny Wallet, and it's really just a description of me. My channel even though it's primarily focused on weight loss, it should be focused on weight loss and um, just financial management, getting out of debt, things like that. Um, so you will see more of that this year. But um, I, I think I have a similar story just as far as my weight loss starting and stalling and, and, and stopping completely, and now I'm kind of in a new phase. So, um, yeah, and I've also picked up powerlifting. I love that. So... Yeah, you guys come check it out. It's Fat Guy Skinny Wallet. And um, same thing, I'm on Instagram. Facebook is Fat Guy Skinny Wallet. Twitter, it's just whatever the initials are, the Fat Guy Skinny Wallet, F-G-S-W, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just check us out there. And we're doing this because a lot of people watch the show, and then afterwards they say, how do I find Lori's channel? How do I find Kali's channel? What's Rose's name on YouTube? So we're doing this to make sure everybody has it. Um, so... Let's go into our, our topic for today. It's kind of like a lot of topics under one heading. So we're talking about goals. Uh, some people call them resolutions, but if you don't do it around New Year's, I don't know if it's still a resolution. It should be. But anyway, we'll, we'll just call them goals. Um, so just talking about setting goals, trying to evaluate your goals, um, setting up a plan to turn them into action and not just sit around and say you have goals, but actually doing something to reach them and also – um, when, if ever, is a good time to change your goals, to reevaluate them. So, yeah, we'll just be talking about that, and I guess we should actually go into what our goals are a little bit. So, um, Lori's actually more prepared than me, so she's making me look bad now. So I'm actually going to ask her to go first and talk about her goals. She has all this stuff written down. You should see it. So, anyway, if you just share some of your goals with us, they don't all have to be 2014, but just talk to us about your goals. All right, so basically since this channel is all about health and wellness, I'll start to say my biggest goal for this year 
is to lose some weight that I have around the hips, the thighs, the buttocks, the arms, the belly, the whole nine yards. I know a lot of you say, oh, you don't look like you need to lose weight, and thank you for that. I love you all, but yes, I do. Everybody has their own number in mind. I'm almost at the point where I'm not even looking at a number anymore. I'm just looking at measurements, and um, I do have a history of some cardiac things, so I am trying to keep in mind that being healthy is paramount rather than a number on the scale. I do weigh myself once a week. I do make weigh-in videos on my YouTube channel. Um, but that's pretty much my goal. I set a goal, <laughs> this is really funny, to keep myself motivated. If you guys watched the Renew show last season, you will know that I said I would be in a bikini on the Renew show at the end of the season. So at the end of the season, yep, you're going to see me in there. <laughs> um, oh my God, what did I do? But in the back of my mind, it's keeping me motivated. And um, I have a lot of other goals, too. I mean, I want to buy a house this year. That's a goal of mine. I rent, and I can't stand it anymore. I am just tired of throwing money away and not having any equity. At the same time, renting a house isn't such a bad idea because I don't pay taxes. I don't pay for snow removal. If you live in Jersey today, you'll know what I mean. I don't have to pay for any major repairs so I mean while renting has its pros for me as I'm getting older I'm starting to realize that I don't have any equity to my name whatsoever and so that's a goal um, another goal is to be supportive of Jesse my husband and his band they're trying to get signed um, Psycho Prism is the name of the band um, so while I have some internal goals I have goals surrounding my entire family as well so um, those are my main goals and to keep my channel active and I'm trying to create some different things other than the same and I know that Khalif and I have the renew show goal right it's this season's gonna be so different than what you're used to everybody you have no idea you just wait and see keep watching alright that's good um, okay I have to say one thing before I um, move on I forgot to say at the beginning it actually meant to and just slipped my mind um, but for those of you who are new to the show, there are actually three of us who are hosts, but um, Gastric Rose, well, Rosemary is the other host, and she had a family emergency that came up that, you know, she had to take care of, so she isn't able to be with us, but, you know, she planned to, she was in the planning meeting, so, you know, we definitely have a lot of great things in store, but um, that's why you only see two of us today. Um, as far as my goals, yeah, I have a lot of them. Um, but I think the main goal overall is to really conquer fear and any insecurities that I have. I have a lot of ideas and have a lot of things that I want to do, a lot of things that I think I can do. Um, and the only thing that stops me from taking a step forward is fear. And it's been like that all of my life. I've always had this fear of of, of being wrong, a fear of looking foolish, a fear of saying the wrong thing, a fear of alienating someone, just all of these things that have come up um, over the years that have stopped me from moving forward with my goals. So this year my main goal is to just push past those fears and anything that comes up that I want to do that I think is important to just go out and do it. So you know that includes the powerlifting um, and really going full force into it and not just kind of sitting around being happy being one of the stronger guys at my gym but really going out and delving into powerlifting trying to put the weight loss behind me once and for all and um, just really um, you know just really focusing on losing fat changing the way that my body looks and feels like I said putting it behind me um, I also want to focus on my writing and the things that for my from my website um, Sherry Ann and I, my wife Sherry Ann, we have a lot of ideas on really taking our online business and offline business and catapulting it forward. So just trying to get over those things that are um, that are stopping me. And so I've done some things early this year. I guess we'll talk about that in the next part. But I've done some things already that I've just been thrilled about um, that I should have done a year or two ago and just kept putting it off and procrastinating because I was just afraid of what could happen. I was always looking at the worst that could happen and imagining that it would happen um, rather than going forward and being confident. So that's what I'm working on. Um, 
this year. And while we're blabbering, I hope that you guys are thinking about your goals and talking about them. And let us know down in the comment section what your goals are. And not just what your goals are, but what you're doing to accomplish them. Um, so, Lori, what, that's, that's a good question. What um, things are you doing to try to accomplish your goals so you won't be here next year saying the same, the goals again? Well, I tried really hard this time. Well, you guys, for those of you that are familiar with me and my story, you know a couple months back, probably around October, November, I was so off the bandwagon. I mean, I had no discipline whatsoever. I didn't, I almost like didn't care anymore. Um, and it really took me a while to decide to restart. And I really have set a lot of um, standards for myself. Like I am in a routine now. Um, partially it's easier with me for this one particular program. Wonder Slim is prepackaged diet plan. It's a lot of protein shakes and you know you can have your lean protein and some vegetables. You can have some brown rice. You can have fruit during the day, whatnot. It's not as strict as Metafast. Um, there's more calories. You're getting about 13 to 1600, I've averaged per day. Um, whereas I know Metafast was like 800 a day, um, and I wasn't do. I did really well on Metafast because it was quick weight loss, but I wasn't feeling well. So I'm not saying it's not a great plan. It just wasn't for me. Weight Watchers was after that, and um, it was a great plan in the beginning, but it's so hard when you're a parent, when you're a wife, when you have a full-time job. I now have two full-time jobs because I started my own business and it's like I was doing everything but taking care of myself and having to make choices of what to prepare and all this other stuff. So it was just becoming so overwhelming that I was discouraged and I was becoming like frustrated and I felt internally, how the how in the world am I failing at this now? And, you know, I have the type of personality where if I don't see progress, if I don't see, you know, my body shrinking, a number on the scale going down, something to validate the work that I'm putting in, if I don't see anything, I am so quick to be like, this is not working, bye-bye. And then when you don't have a plan, that's when you flounder and that's when you falter. So like like one of my videos said, it has to be like a job. This job is great because I don't have to think about anything but what I'm going to eat for either lunch or dinner depending on when I want to have my lean protein and blah, blah, blah. But it's like a habit for me now. As soon as I wake up, I know I just reach for what I'm going to eat. And it sounds counterintuitive because you could just open your refrigerator and grab what you're going to eat. But for me, this works, so that's why I'm doing it. But um, I also am starting to really focus on seeing, like, seeing a mental image, seeing that visual. So if I say I want to be in a bathing suit on the Renew show next, um, uh, next at the end of the season, that's great. But how am I going to feel if I don't get to do that? I am going to feel like the biggest failure and I'm going to feel like I let all of you down, not because I want you to see me in a bathing suit. It's just, it could be any goal that you set. It was kind of like a joke. Remember, Khalif, you're going to wear a full face of makeup if I'm wearing the bikini, remember? <laughs> you guys, don't let that go. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, I have to, like, so if I want to eat a slice of pizza while I'm on this plan, I can have it. But is the two seconds worth of me eating the pizza worth the feeling it's going to be if I'm not at my goal at the end of the season? And I've been doing a lot of that. Like the other day, I was very active. And while I stayed within my calories, I could tell the activity that I got was just I needed to eat more. So I was jonesing for a hamburger from Wendy's. I just was. I wanted that cheeseburger happy meal. And I was like, I could do it. I totally could do it if I wanted to because, right, this is life, whatever. But if I do, it's going to feel great for, like, 
30 seconds and then what's what's gonna happen tomorrow when I wake up I'm gonna be like I can't believe I ate that oh my god but then I started to think why would I feel like that because it's life like I can't live on packaged food the rest of my life that's a question I get often how do you expect to live on this your whole life and all this other stuff I don't I just am using it as a platform it's teaching me small portions, frequent eating. It's teaching me to stay within a calorie range. So at the point where I transition into eating non-packaged foods once again, I hope, I, can, I, I, I mean, I would like to say I will, but I'm human and I make mistakes, but I hope I've learned. And it's funny to hear myself say that because how many of us go on weight loss plans over and over and over. I mean, this is nothing new. This is like a lifetime of wondering, am I ever going to get to a point where I'm satisfied? The messed up part about it is, you guys, how many of you guys have photo albums or pictures of you 20 years ago, let's say, and you were a lot trimmer than you are now, and yet you thought you looked horrible back then? That is my struggle. I always think I'm not good enough visually. Like, Khalif and I were talking before. I'm sure he'll bring it up later. I don't want to ruin it now, right, Khalif? <laughs> yeah, I may bring it up. Uh, probably not this week. All right. I won't even get into it. But Khalif and I have a disagreement on something. And <laughs> all right, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, boy. See, guys, I talk so much, I forget what I was saying. But um, I'm trying to keep visual. I'm trying to keep, you know, how do I feel when I go to a store and try in a pair of pants that a month ago couldn't fit? And now I can button them and they feel comfortable. That feeling is euphoric. And it's addicting. There's like an addictive behavior that I have when I start seeing myself get smaller. Because um, it's something I've wanted for so long. I, I don't want to be 100 pounds, but I would like to be about, I mean, if I could be like 120, I would be very happy. It's going to take a while to get there. If I could be 130, I would be happy. You know what? If I'm breathing and walking, I'm happy. <laughs> but it's a goal. Will I ever get there? I don't know. I hope so. And that's what I'm trying to attain. And... You know, I've, I have some tools. I have, like, a little thing on my phone. Let me see if I can pull up a couple things. I don't know. Khalif, am I taking up your time? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only us two, and I do have a question that came in that I'm going to ask you in a little while. So. All right. Amy, I, I talked about visualization. Oh, believing in your goal. Here I go, and I'm saying, will I achieve it? I don't know. You have to believe it. So guess what? I'm going to start to believe it. Live on the Renew Show, I believe. I believe. Stand up and say it. I believe that I will <laughs> get to where I am mindset at, get to where I'm comfortable at. Um, you know, it's funny because life is a journey, and that's what life is. It's it's the journey of everything. Every day we wake up, we have our routine, right? We brush our teeth, we get dressed. For those of us that work outside the home, we go to work. For those that work inside the home, everything in life is a journey. So is weight loss a journey? Yes. Will we ever get to where we want to be? Are we ever going to be satisfied? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I see people that have had weight loss surgery and they're on this like amazing path and they're losing weight. And I never had the surgery, but I watch and I've seen and I followed some stories and people have actually gotten so tiny and they still say in their videos, I still see myself as a big person. So does that mean their journey is still continuing? Does it mean they're satisfied? What does it mean? I mean, are we ever satisfied with what we see in the mirror? Are we satisfied? Like, what, what is it that makes us crave to be something that we're not? Is it society? Is it us? Is it both? Like, what is it? That's, like, something I think about a lot. Um, why do I buy these jeans? Why don't I just wear a pair of ripped-up sweatpants if I want to go somewhere? Why? Am I conforming to what? You know? 
I don't know. That's one thing. Um, what else? <laughs> ah, choose wisely, guys. Every decision that you make counts. Every decision, every thought, every decision. It's conscious, subconscious. We dream at night. Things come out that maybe we're not aware of during the day. Um, use the information that you gather from your dreams because I swear that stuff is powerful and believe it and I don't know. Just every choice you make, use it wisely. Uh, what else do I have here? Remember the power of now and why. Again, I've asked this question and I got so many responses. Why? If you don't know your why as to what, what this path of weight loss is or getting healthy if you don't know the why and it could be anything because everybody's got their own but if you don't know that you're never ever gonna I'm sorry to say it but you won't succeed if you don't know why if you're just on a diet to be on a diet eh, maybe I'll lose 50 pounds why not say you know what I'm gonna lose two pounds this week two pounds is easier to achieve in your mind and whatnot than 50 pounds. So in, in one week, if you can lose two pounds, you've already hit a goal. Next week, I'm gonna lose two pounds. Boom. Make your goals attainable, make them small. Um, push through rough beginnings. How many of us start a diet? How many of us go to the gym the first week in January? And then by like the third week of January, no one's in the gym anymore. I have something to do. Eh, it was a birthday party. You know, it's like push through the rough beginnings. If you can do something, they say, what, six weeks, Kali? Something like that, it becomes yeah. a habit. Yeah. You know, make your, make your decision a habit. Make it a habit because... You would never wake up in the morning and say, ew, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to brush my teeth. I don't feel like doing that. Who would do that? Right? Unless, think, you're, unless, I work with I, unless one of you out there just doesn't brush your teeth. But it's a <laughs> we wake up, we, we go to the bathroom, we brush our teeth. You know, we put our seatbelt on. Hopefully you guys are putting your seatbelts on. They become a habit. I grew up not wearing a seatbelt. That was the way it was back in the 70s. We didn't wear a seatbelt. It's a habit now. Boom, I get in the car, I put on my seatbelt. So make your choices become a habit, and then it won't be such a hard chore. Um, I've already taken like 25 minutes of your time, so it will be my co-host, Khalif's turn now. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll save my question. Um, but, you know, for me, the things that I'm doing, kind of what you said about making making it a habit. I mean, um, in the... At night, actually, I usually prepare all of my uh, clothes and everything for the gym, um, and sometimes I put them on the couch. Um, I used to just kind of leave them on the couch, and then Cherianne indicated that she wasn't too fond of that area to store my gym clothes, so I now put them there late at night. But, you know, things like that. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't have that, oh, it's, it's only 4 o'clock and it's dark and I'm trying to fill around and where are my clothes. You know, I know what everything is. I put my wallet and all that stuff in my gym bag the night before, little things like that so that I will have no excuse to go. I try to prepare food the day before, again, so that it takes away the excuse. I mean, if I – it could take me five minutes to prepare something, or and it will make me five minutes late to work. Well, I have the type of job where it doesn't matter if I'm five minutes late, you know, once or twice. So – that's not really an excuse, but I'll use it as an excuse and then go buy something for lunch. So I have to make sure I prepare things ahead of time. Even if it's just a bunch of little snacks, that's what I'll do if I don't have time to prepare a meal. So little things like that I try to do to make sure that I remove any excuse that I used to fall back on all the time. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been difficult. Even tonight um, I was exhausted. Um, took medication the night before, or took actually melatonin to try to sleep, and I was exhausted when I came home. Fighting through the snow, it took an hour and a half, and it should only take like 20 minutes. And, um, you know, I was exhausted. I actually fell asleep for about an hour and needed to make something to eat. And, you know, I was really tempted to say, maybe I can try to order something. I only ate once today, so I could still stay under my calories, but, you know, and I'm trying to talk myself into making a bad decision. 
and have an excuse. And then, you know, finally, fortunately, I didn't. I went and just made some eggs. But, you know, I, I just had that mindset initially to, to make the bad decision. And then I had to say, well, wait, I don't have that excuse because there's food that's easy to prepare in the kitchen. So I think just doing very small things to remove the excuses, that's what really helps me because I'm very good at justifying the wrong decision. And I can, to myself, make it sound like, oh, well, I had no choice but to do this thing. I had no choice but to miss the gym. I had no choice but to go to Moles when obviously I had a choice. So I just try to take away, you know, anything that's going to do that, um, going to give me a, an excuse. And I also try to set small goals because for me, sometimes if the goal is so far away, instant mo motivation isn't there. Like if my goal is to be under 200 pounds this year, by the end of the year, my mi what I have tonight isn't really going to impact me being under 200 pounds at the end of the year. But what I do tonight can lead to a habit, and it makes it harder tomorrow to say no to making the wrong decision. And it can lead to, it can just lead to a series of wrong decisions and a domino effect. Um, so I have to create smaller goals in my mind so that, yeah, it may not have impact my weight at the end of the year one mil, but it can impact other things I'm trying to do this week. It can impact how I'll feel tomorrow morning. So just trying to kind of set those things up in my mind so that I set small goals and then I make small, tiny changes to just remove the excuses rather than trying to take on a huge thing. One of the guys I follow on here, um, his name is well, his name is Anthony, but his channel name is Dip the Black Ink. His trainer always says to him, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time, just like you would eat anything else. And so he always talks about eating that elephant, you know, one bite at a time and setting these huge goals but just doing it one small bite at a time and being satisfied with that little bite, not just being disappointed because you didn't reach your full goal. So that's something else I kind of keep in mind. That that helps. This really been helping me a lot lately. Um, you know, Lori and I were talking the other day, and it's like over the last five weeks, I think we've lost close to 30 pounds, right? Yeah, yeah we have. <laughs> Combined, yeah. So you know, since, since Renew, since the last season, since the last show when we did that newlywed show, you know, pretty much at that time, we, um, yeah, because we kind of started this new focus on weight loss at the same time. Let's, guys, Lori copies me. I should just say it now. I mean, sometimes she'll call me in the morning. How are you wearing your hair? What color outfit are you putting on? Like, those types of things. You know, she copies me. Like, it's, yeah, it's a little bad. But, you know, I just deal with it. She's such a nice person. So I let her do it. So she wanted to try to get this new focus on weight loss at the same time I did. And, you know, <laughs> We've lost about 30 pounds in the last five weeks. So just excited about that, trying to implement these small changes to see big results. Definitely. You know, we, we alongside of all of you guys out there, I mean, you guys have no idea how much you guys really mean to us, seriously. Every single day, we talk to one another. And the whole messed up thing, I say it all the time. We don't really, none of us know each other, like, in the flesh. It's just technology brought us all together. And I can honestly say, I'm going to tell you something. This is the truth. My hand to God, okay? I have my own personal Facebook page, like, my personal name with, like, all my family stuff. And, you know, well before Felicia Nurse ever came about. I still have it. While I still adore the people that I talk to on there, it's nothing compared to what I have as Felicia Nurse. All of you guys, the comments, the support, the questions, the feeling that I belong to something is just huge. Huge. If I have a bad day, the first thing I want to do is explain it either in a video, on Facebook, text Khalif, text, I mean... So many of you have my phone number. I mean, I will give it to anybody as long as you're not a wackadoodle. <laughs> um, and don't be calling me at 3 in the morning, people. I do sleep. At, well, no, I don't always sleep at night, but you know that when I post on Facebook. I can't sleep. But I'm just saying, look, I mean, somebody the other day said they were they were, were I instant messaging me, and they said, oh, my God, I feel like I'm talking to a star. 
I am by no means a star, guys. I, I will never, ever, I appreciate it, but I'm not. And I will talk to anybody. Any one of you need me, I'm always there. Instant message me. If you want my phone number, I'll give it to you. I just feel like you guys are like friends and family. Khalif, I know you agree. We talk about it all the time. Like, you guys, this whole big thing is just amazing. Like, I can't even believe I grew up, there was no such thing as a computer. There was no such thing as a cell phone. I had a black and white TV. Like, I can't, I can't even imagine my life without you guys and this and this setting and how we all struggle with similar things and yet we can, as a group, come together and support one another and give recipes and Khalif with his gym advice and like, it's just amazing. Like I'm, I'm blown away by it all the time. I just am. I don't even know where, guys, I don't even know where I was going. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just am. Honestly, I mean, you guys all mean so much to all of us. And, you know, for those of you watching tonight, for those of you watching back on replay or what have you, just know that all of you mean so much to us. You do. It's like one big family. One day, we're all going to get together in one big setting. I don't care what it takes. I don't care when it happens. We're going to fly in. We're going to go visit. I don't know how it's going to happen. We're going to do it. With them. That's a goal. That's a goal. Well, when you buy your houses, make sure it's big enough for YouTube. We can have a big YouTube party. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> See, that? See that, guys? See? See well, you, I, might have, you might have to financially advise me, Kali. Oh, boy. I will tell you not to do it. I definitely um, need that. And we got a question, actually, from um, Rob Reno actually on his new channel, um, Follow Your Own Path 1. Yeah. He said, if you could only have one goal that is weight-related, what would it be? Uh, it would be to wear a size 4 pair of pants. Why? Because I have a pair hanging in my closet. <laughs> that would be my goal. I want to fit in those pair, those jeans. Okay. Weight loss related. Health wise, something totally different. But well, he said wise. weight related, so I don't know if he means you have to have a specific number. So. 120. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll. I mean, I'll, I just say to be under 200 pounds, probably to be in the low 180s um, or even a 170s. And honestly, I'm only thinking about that because of uh, powerlifting, um, you know, weight classes. You know, right now, I'm strong compared to someone who's 150. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't be competing in the same class. If I compete with people who are my size, I, I mean, I would be in last place easily, you know. So who are my weight, I mean. So I need to drop a lot of this fat so that what's left is is – mainly muscle, and is strong enough to be able to compete with people who are that size. So I would say I probably need to drop into the 170s to um, to do that. I'm only 5'6", guys, so it's not like that's, you know. Aww. I always thought you were taller than that. Because I was like 300 pounds, is that why? No, or? because when you're standing at, you know, at the machines in the gym, you just look tall. Oh, I set the bars real low. <laughs> that's, that's, really, that's the reason, really. Well, I'm only 5'4", um, so you beat me by two. But knowing you, you probably wear heels, so you'd be taller than me walking. Not really as much as I would like to. Can you imagine me running around the hospital with high heels on? <laughs> Tripping over the IV pole. Can, you can see that. I have a little bit of, like, Lucy, you know, like, I love Lucy. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. That's a little, I have that in me. You know, I walk into a room, I'm all gloved up, my hands go through the glove, my hair net's all crooked, and I'm like, good morning. I'm oh, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to have fun in life. Yeah. So, oh all right, what do you think about, like, reevaluating your goals? Like, at what point would you try to look at something and say either, okay, this isn't working or maybe I set this goal that's unrealistic or like, 
when would you take the step to, to look and then how do you go about trying to decide if you're just scared or if you really did set a goal that's too far out and you need to reel it back in? Well, I have learned something and it's a perfect question. Any, listen to this one, you ready guys? Here's my, oh, any plan, any diet, any of that will work if you do the program the right way. If you count your macros and you know where you're supposed to be, if you do it consistently, you lose weight. If you go to the gym and it's consistent, you're going to build muscle. So I've learned that when I complain about a plan not working, it's not the plan that didn't work. It was me. Weight Watchers will work. You just have to follow the plan. Um, and I love to make excuses like, that darn thing doesn't work anymore, blah, blah, blah. Oh, perimenopausal. Uh, no. <laughs> I just didn't follow it the right way. Plain and simple. So, Cully, when do we reevaluate? We reevaluate ourselves. We don't reevaluate the plan. You just have to set. You just have to set your mind to it. If you're gonna eat a certain amount of calories every day, and you falter and you go over it, whatever, and then you don't have a loss, but you stayed the same. That's great. But if you're set to lose weight, staying the same is not great. It happens, right? Yeah. But it's not great. So who do we reevaluate? Do we reevaluate? The plan that we're on, or do we reevaluate because maybe we ate a little bit too much, or yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I think that's yeah. I mean I think that's really true, and you know I think that kind of goes back to when we we were talking about before when <laughs> I hate bringing this up, but when I made that video talking about um you know whether we really want accountability or not, you know I. I think that was really part of it is that some, we we get so good at um, making excuses and making excuses that sound wonderful and it sounds so logical and perfect and they're really just excuses. They're things that we put in front of us so that when we look back we don't feel so guilty for stopping. And you know, um, there's actually a <clears throat> a study done. I haven't read it all, and a medical doctor was writing writing it up. And he called the title of his article "Medical Derangement," and actually, someone on YouTube pointed it out to me. And um, metabolic metabolic derangement—I don't know if I said that right. He um, and his basic premise was looking at the psychological things that happen when we're in a caloric deficit. Meaning, most of the so, for instance, you have someone who would burn about three thousand calories a day, and they were trying to lose weight, and they would drop it down to two thousand. And they were reporting eating 2,000 calories a day, but when they were actually stuck in a lab, they were and consuming what they normally consume, but they were watched. They were consuming 3,500, 4,500 calories a day, and they were misreporting. Every single person except I think one misreported and underreported what they were eating. So so many of us say, "Hey, I only eat 1,200 calories a day. I only eat 1,400 calories," but they were saying even when you watch the measure. You know, they'll measure something and, and you have a, a heaping spoonful of something or while they're cooking, they're taking little tastes and they're snacking on this, what they're preparing for their kids and so many things. And, you know, five, six, seven hundred calories later, you know, they see where they are. And I think we were talking about this the other day, Laurie. And, yeah. you know, you really and it isn't intentional. It isn't something that they know they're doing. They really think they're eating the fifteen hundred calories a day. And you, when they're watched and videotaped and recorded, they're eating double what they thought they were and what they recorded. And it's because of this psychological thing that happens when we're in such a depressed, um, you know, caloric intake for so long, especially people who are active and yeah. burning a lot more calories than someone who's just sedentary. So, you know, it's just like we, we don't just battle the excuses, but we battle these things that our brain, our subconscious does that we don't even know is happening. So it's like we have two enemies that we really have to watch out for. And, um, you know, so, so I think when it comes to evaluating, like you said, we really have to see if it, is it something in us or is it something in the goal or in the plan itself. Um, maybe we're doing something, but we're not doing the most optimal thing, um, you know, whatever it is. But I, I, think it, 
I think we do have to be careful. And sometimes that's where another person or a group of people can be helpful to really, you know, question us or to really make us look at it from another perspective. Yeah, and you bring up a really good point because looking back on last year, I mean. I would post videos, oh, I stayed the same this week, yay, I maintained, you know. Watching the videos and hearing myself, that's really bizarre. So I encourage all of you guys out there, if you don't even make a YouTube video, record, everybody has a cell phone and everybody's phone makes videos. So if you can record yourself on your phone and just watch yourself back at maybe like a week or two after that, you'll start to see... Like, I started to see in my videos consistency, you know, like, I would lose a pound, I would stay the same, and I was always like, yay! And then, like, now when I look back, I'm like, who was I fooling? Like, I wasn't exactly that woohoo attitude. I mean, was I trying to put on a show for you guys? No. I was actually convinced that that was good enough at the time. But looking back on it, I'm like, I could have done so much more. And I'm almost like wanting to kick that person on the video, like, why didn't you do more? How was that satisfying to you? Like, why were you so happy that you stayed the same? Because those of us that make videos, if you go back and watch them, the videos where it, and this is only if you have a goal to lose weight. So I'm not, you know, judging anybody. But if you've set out and said, I am going to lose this amount of weight, I am on a weight loss plan, and you're making videos that say, I maintain, hooray, and all this other stuff, that's great because you didn't gain the weight. I get it. But when you look back on it, it's like, why didn't I do more? Why didn't I come on there and be like, I lost a pound, one pound. What could I have done different? Could I have exercised more? Could I have not had as many cookies that week? What could I have done it's like we become complacent sometimes, and comments come in and they say, oh, that's okay, it's part of, you know, this is life. It's almost like you want somebody to be like, wake up! You didn't lose weight this week. You're not going to reach your goal if you're just maintaining. And I, I hope I'm not coming off harsh. It's just, when I, and I'm talking about my own stuff, like when I look back, like, I wish just one person might have been like, um, girl, you need to get your ASS on a treadmill or something because you're telling us all that you want to lose weight, but you're happy that you stayed the same. So it's really not making sense. Does that make that kind of sounds like your rant video a little bit. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but I think you, you said it a lot better than I did. <laughs> no, but it's just, you know, we're all here for one another, and if we can't be honest, like, guys, if I make a video and I say I maintain and I'm happy, somebody from now on better write a comment and be like, girl, you're not happy because you said you wanted to lose weight. Wake me up a little bit. I mean, sometimes it's beyond our control, right? It's that time of the month and whatever, and I get it. And that's, But I'm talking about the whole premise of this show tonight was setting goals and maintaining them and doing what we can to achieve them. So I've said it, I'm out to lose some weight. So if you see me slacking off or whatever, I want one of you to tell me. Please. Khalif, you? <laughs> you know I will, so, yeah. But for you too, I mean, if you're slacking off, you want one of oh, us to tell you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 I, I love that much more. And like we were saying, even when we were talking with, with Rose before one time last season, you know, as long as it's done in love and done because the person has a genuine concern and they're not just trying to be a jerk, you know, saying, what are you happy for? You're still fat. I mean, you know, if it's someone who actually cares about you, especially if you, you have an established relationship with that person, even if it's just through YouTube, um, if you have an established relationship, it's very easy. This person does care. This person comments a lot. They're very encouraging. But when I need it, they're there to shake me and they're there to slap me upside the head, too. And that's, I think that's when it's really effective. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, I, I um, actually, it's funny because Zen, I see she has a question. It's kind of like a follow up. But, you know, one thing I just remember, she made a video. Actually, she, normally when she makes videos, she talks about her mind. She always talks about, like, erasing the tapes, or I think that's the way she says it. 
Um, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry, Zen. But um, I think she's like erasing the old tapes. And really um, just talking about changing her mindset and these things that controlled her way of thinking and really changing them. So not just trying to change the action, but really going deep down and say, what is the root cause of this? And, and you know, and really trying to get rid of that. And I really love that thinking, you know, thinking of tapes playing over and over and over, and you really have to kind of, you know, erase them and start over with a new foundation of thinking. And that's, I guess that's kind of why the show is called Renew, and that's really the way we're, you know, we're trying to approach it. Um, all right, so her question is, when do you decide that your goal is workable for you? If you do the work and follow the plan with not many results, what would you do? You want to answer that one, or she is that for me, Zen? I think it's for both of us. So I was just talking a lot, so you can answer. <laughs> um, I just I've really done a lot of soul searching um, over the holiday season about myself and about. I actually like started to think about some of the plans that I was on and they weren't working and why I jumped from plan to plan to plan. Um, and honestly, Zen, what it comes down to is it was me. It wasn't the plan. Again, if I followed them correctly, I would have succeeded. Some may work a little quicker than others, you know, depending on what you put into your body. But, you know, the hardest part about losing weight truly Aside from our, you know, because I believe in the mind-body connection, um, aside from that, a lot of us are addicted to food, plain and simple. We love the taste of it. It's a social thing for us. It's our culture, whatnot. Um, and Khalif and I were talking about this over the weekend as to, um, you know, if you're addicted to smoking cigarettes or if you're an alcoholic or if you're a shopaholic or if you're a makeupaholic, <laughs> You can easily, with therapy and support and things like that, you can really conquer your addiction. We need food to live, plain and simple. So for somebody who's addicted to food, to say to them, you know what, you just can't do it. Sorry, can't have any food anymore for the rest of your life. What, are you going to put a feeding tube in? No, that's, like, ridiculous. So we have to learn. It's always a struggle for those of us trying to lose weight. It will always be a struggle. There will never be a day. You know, you don't finish a plan. It's like, oh, I'm done. That never happens. It's a constant. I wanted to say the word battle because that's the only word I know how to put it into context. But it will never go away. I don't care what if you've had surgery, if you're on Wonder Slim, Metafast, Weight Watchers, it's always there. Always. It's like the one thing that we think about all the time, right? Is that the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning? It is for me. Yeah. What am I going to eat? As the day goes by, I'm looking at my watch. All right, two to three hours went by. I got to eat again. It's like the center of our universe. Yeah. And we're the only ones that could do the work. So while a plan is great, if you don't stick to it, so I think the re-eval has to come to us, not really the plan. That's just me. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, and I, yeah, I kind of sense two, like two questions there. You know, look, thinking about your goal, because she asked to decide if your goal is workable. And I think that is important, because sometimes we can be a little overzealous with our goals. Um, and... Sometimes we can be so tied to them that we'll be devastated if we don't hit them. Yeah. You know, like when I set my powerlifting goals last year, I honestly did not think there was a chance in the world that I could deadlift 405 pounds. I didn't think it was possible because I was struggling for the entire six months. That was the worst lift. I would come, uh, it was just brutal. And, you know, I actually set four PRs that one day that I went for, two, for 405. And each time I just lifted heavier than I ever lifted before, and I just kept going up, going up, and hit the goal. And I didn't think it was possible, but I think I had already set up in my mind, I'm going to try as hard as I can, but if I don't get it, I'm going to try my best in January to get it, and I'll just be a little late. Um, so I, don't, I, I think, though, sometimes we can get a little overzealous, but I think we... <clears throat> 
we just have to be careful to make sure that we aren't selling ourselves short, that it really was that we were unrealistic in setting the goal. Because most of the time we set a goal and we put a time limit. And I think Riccio was talking about that, um, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago in her, her weigh-in video, Rayma Walk, um, there's a YouTube channel. And, you know, she was talking about just, um, you know, how... Sometimes, you know, I, I said it's, it's both. Sometimes we can go too, you know, too far, you know, in the goal, but sometimes we also um, sell ourselves short. And, you know, I think that, you know, I, obviously she isn't the only one. There are a lot of us who kind of go through that, and we have to make sure it's a balance, make sure that we're not just giving ourselves an excuse to say, oh, I don't have to work hard, but also that we're not beating ourselves up for doing not doing something we probably could have never done. Yeah. And with the plan, I think that for me, if I start any plan for anything, I want to know everything I can possibly know about it. So I want to know why it should work. I don't just want to hear, oh, it worked for that person. Okay, I'll try it. And I don't know anything about the plan. I don't know what, what it's going to do for me. Why does it work for this person? Maybe it won't work for me. Who knows? I don't know. Um, so those types of things I think we need to figure out ahead of time so that when we, when the plan isn't working, we can look and say, is it really the plan? You know, did I go on, let's say, if it was Wonder Slim, and if, I don't know if it is, but if the the way that you eat, Lori, is the way that you have to eat, meaning like a couple of snacks and meals five or six times a day, I can never do it. I can never eat every three or four hours in a day. I've tried that before, and, oh, it was so brutal. So if I jumped on it because you were successful and then it doesn't work for me, it's probably because I'm messing up somewhere or I'm doing something because it just clashes with my lifestyle. So we have to, you know, really find things that work for us and really evaluate it and just be honest with ourselves, I guess. It's kind of the short way of blabbering on like that for minutes. No, but that makes sense because, again, you're saying it would be you, not the plan. Right. The plan works, but it would be you because you couldn't eat that many times a day. Yeah. So, you know, and you know what, I, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have been so adamant about it because there are plans out there that are pure BS. Like, I'll give you a for instance. <laughs> Do not go online and buy diet pills that say, oh, liposine, you could lose 40 pounds in two months. And then there's a disclaimer at the bottom. The FDA, the FDA does not approve. Guys, if there's a disclaimer on any diet, any pills, don't take the stuff, please, please. <laughs> the nurse is telling you. That stuff is garbage. If you need to go on medication to lose weight, go to see your doctor, have your labs drawn, figure out. Don't just order something off the TV because, guys, they're just looking to make a dollar. You don't know what you're putting into your body. Please don't do that. Because uh, I know when I was younger, I did. I did all that stupid, crazy stuff. Stacker 2, Phentermine, Fenfloramine. I said this in a video. Hydrochlorothiazide, blood pressure medication to lose weight. I was taking like a water pill. I was like 120 pounds taking water pills and everything else. I wound up getting heart issues from it. Um, and, they're, and they're still part of me today because I took stupid diet pills when I was like 20 years. I mean, it's just... Ugh, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a question from Eric, Modern Day Lost. And if you guys aren't following him, please follow him. This guy, oh, man, if you want to see somebody work out hard, you got to watch him. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so his question is, in regard to your weight loss, fitness, healthy lifestyle journey so far, do you have any regrets? You can take that oh. one. Okay, I'll go first. Um <laughs> Not being consistent, I guess, would be the biggest thing. Um, and, yeah, I think that's the biggest regret is not being consistent and also just starting so late. You know, it was something I just didn't um, I didn't think I could. I honestly, I just didn't think I could do it. And, or it just didn't, I didn't have enough in me to push me to want to do it. So I think that's a combination, starting so late because I just wasn't motivated or confident that I could actually do it, and also um, not being consistent even when I started. 
Yeah, for me it would be the blame game. I just blamed everything, you know, I'm too tired, I don't have the money this week to buy all this healthy food, I worked late, oh God, now my daughter needs a ride with her friend. Like, I always made an excuse. I, and yet I was like, yep, yeah, I'm sticking to the plan, when in reality, maybe like 50% sticking to the plan. Hoping for a good way in, like, it just, I, when I finally stopped saying, you know, it was everybody else's fault but my own, as soon as I took, like, accountability for myself, and I picked a plan that I don't have to think ahead with, because that just suits my lifestyle, it's so far been successful, and I'm, I'm not going to say I hope I can maintain it, I'm, like, focused on it, so it's, that's what I've set out to do, so. I'm going to succeed this time, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we do, Sherry Ann, I'm not avoiding your question. I'm just going to save it for last. I see it. Um, crazy Running Mom, Brooke, she says, what would you do if others saw your goals as unrealistic? Huh. Um, it depends on what it is. Well, you know what? No. With me, I'm extremely competitive, and I think the way – to get me to succeed is to tell me I can't do it. I'm like, there with you. Yeah, no matter what it is, if you tell me you won't be able to bench press over 300 pounds this year, I guarantee you I will do it, and I will come to your house and do it in front of you. Like, that's just how I am. And every day I will be thinking, she said I couldn't do it. She said I couldn't run, you know, 500 miles this year. She said I couldn't get this fast or whatever it is. And it's like, okay, that's I'm going to do it, and I will be thinking of you every day while I'm hitting the goal. Ditto. Don't be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with me. It's like I need somebody else to tell me. Like, it's not good enough if I do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's And, you know, it's funny because you see that in sports um, as well. Like, every team wants to be the underdog. Yeah. Every t they could be a 50 point favorite and they'll come in an interview and say nobody believed we could do this. We believed in us. You were the favorite. What do you mean nobody believed you can do it? Everybody thought you could do it. Nobody believed in us. We believed in ourselves and we stuck together. Everybody just wants to feel like they're overcoming some great adversity. So I I don't know. I think that's just within us now. <laughs> Where does that accent come from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just a conglomerate of different athletes I've heard in the past. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> um, okay, so Miss Beautiful Alicia asks, what would be your best advice to others starting their journey? You have to find your why. If you're starting a new journey, that means you've been on many before. So why is it different this time? Why? Why now? Why? 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 You got to find your why. Yeah. Why? Why is it different? Why am I going to accomplish it this time? Why am I not going to fail? What is it going to take? You know, there's so many things, but if you don't have your why, it's like, why do I get up in the morning? Because I have to go to work. Why do I brush my teeth? So I, you know, why do I put a coat on when it's cold outside. We, we have a why for everything. So if you're starting a new plan, find your why, write it on a piece of paper, because now it's real, and focus on the why. And then focus on how and what your goal is and live the emotion. So if your goal is because I want to lose 50 pounds, what kind of feeling are you going to have? If you do lose 50 pounds, what's the emotion going to be? Tie your why to an emotion. And when you can feel that emotion, you'll, you'll succeed. It's like every summer, you know, when you go to try that bathing suit on in the fitting room and you're like, oh, my God, seriously? I didn't even know I looked like this. Like, I don't even want to put a bathing suit on, you know. Feel that emotion. Don't let that. Don't let the summer go by with that same emotion. You don't want to feel that again. You want to put, pick up a bathing suit, put it on, and feel like, yeah, all that hard work. You know, feel the why. That's my advice. Feel it. Yeah, I I agree. I think um, looking at your motivation is is the best way. And like you said, not just why you want to do it, but why you won't fail. And 
you know, I think it's true in so many in so many ways that, um, and it's funny because I'm actually working on a huge blog post right now on my other site, the one with Biblical Finance site, really talking about setting goals, and it's looking specifically at setting goals, um, you know, for for a Christian, and how the motivation is actually even more important in some cases than the goal. And, you know, you really see that. And, I mean, in weight loss, too, I think it's the same thing. I think a lot of times we fail because we don't have the right motivation. So I would say the same thing is to know why you're doing it so that when adversity comes, you can overcome it because you have more than just the plan you're following. You have this thing in your heart that's driving you to do it. Um, yeah. Well said. So the last question, at least the last one that I see here, comes from my dear, sweet, beautiful wife, Sherri Ann. And um, she asked, and she's putting us on the spot a little, she says, are there any goals for Renew this year that we as your audience can track the progress of? Ooh. <laughs> wow. Um, so, I, well, I guess we can say that we're going to try to do a lot of different things, and I know that isn't specific that you can track yet. I guess we have to talk a little more, um, really, to come up with a schedule. Like, we've talked about a lot of things we want to do, but really to come up with a schedule of doing it. Mm -hmm. One thing I can say is we definitely want others to get involved. So one thing we're doing is we're going to try to use the social media and use the, the website a lot more so that it's not just an hour on Tuesday night where we interact, but that we want to interact as renewed uh, a lot more. So um, there's some other things that I don't want to announce yet that we know that we're going to do, but when we announce them, we'll let everybody know and we'll let you know how you can help us stay accountable with those things because this is about the community and we're going to need your help. This is us. It isn't just three people, you know, or sometimes four sitting and talking. This is all of us as a collective. So, you know, it's not even us doing it and you you know, holding us accountable. It's all of us doing it together. Um, and since we have this show and the site and a few other things, we kind of have a platform that we can, you know, kind of facilitate things. So what do you want to say, Laura? I mean, I have to agree. I don't want to give away some of our amazing ideas, and we are going to execute them. And um, once we can start really – we really wanted to do it tonight, guys, but Rose is in here, and so we find it a little, like, we don't want to give too much away while she doesn't have the opportunity to at least voice her opinion. So, um, but there will definitely be things that you can, like Colleen said, hold us accountable with. But, again, it's our show. It's not, and when I say our, I mean you guys. It's all of our show. The Renew Show, yeah, we're the hosts of it, but it's all of ours. So, I mean, if there's something specific you guys want to see, let us know. We're game, right? Yep. I mean, the three of us have come up with a lot of ideas, and some of them are just flat out. Like, we should be on, like, national TV with some of these ideas. <laughs> we won't even – if we can pull off what we're planning, Lord, help us all. It will be outstanding, and I, I'm praying. And we're going to need your help with a couple things. So um, that will be a good judge. So, Sherry Ann, we're going to scoop you in, too. Don't Don't worry about it. You will be there. <laughs> All right, so we're out of time now. Uh, I know it just goes; it does go by quickly. Yeah, totally. Um, so if you guys can figure out a way to help the show go slower without being boring, <laughs> so that we can just enjoy more of the time, let us know that. But um, seriously, we really enjoyed the show, and I enjoyed reading the comments and um, and the questions as well. So we appreciate you guys sticking with us through a third season, and, um, you know, like like uh, Lori said, if you have any ideas for us, just you can go to RenewShow.com and fill out the contact form, and you can send us an email, and you can let us know your questions or your comments or suggestions or anything like that for the show. Um, and, again, we just thank you for all of your support. Don't forget to spread the word about the Renew Show. It will only grow because... All of us in the community are talking about it and promoting it and getting other people to come and check it out. So make sure you're doing that. And, um, yeah, we'll just... Can I say one thing? Yes. All right, a little spoiler alert. Guys, this isn't going to be the same. We're going to have a guest on every week, Monotony. No, 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 no. It's going to be totally changed up. This is going to be like 
the Renew Show reality show slash all kinds of fun stuff. So don't think it's going to be the same every week, I guess. And we're going to do uh, Nah. Nope. Since I'm on board, it's not going to happen. Nope. 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 It's going to be fun. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to do lots of stuff. So that's a spoiler alert. But I can't really get into it yet. When Rose comes, we'll fill you in. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely will. And we'll probably be making some videos throughout the in between the shows as well, just to give you guys, you know, information. Yep. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in and um, have a great night. Bye, guys. We love you. Thank you.